Good morning, my name is Mike Ward and I'm the Key Accounts Manager here at Hike Vision. Welcome to today's webinar about our LiveGuard Active Deterrent Solution. And I just want to thank you for taking time out of your day in attending this webinar. And this webinar will be in the following format. First of all, a presentation by myself, then I'll be handing over to my colleague Matt Rose, who'll be doing a live demonstration. And then we'll do a Mentimeter survey where we'll get your feedback um, on what we've shown you, but also on potential additions we can add to this range. And finally, one of the best bits, where we're having a draw where we're going to give away five LiveGuard cameras and three goodie bag winners to our customers. My presentation itself will be split into three sections. First of all, an introduction of what LiveGuard is. Two, what products work to make this solution. And finally, three suggestions on applications where you could utilize LiveGuard Active Deterrent. Imagine a scenario where a camera captured a criminal breaking into your house and also captured said criminal making off with all your valuables, when an obvious deterrent would have avoided the crime in the first place. Well, this is what we hope to achieve with Active LiveGuard Deterrent. A LiveGuard camera can produce both an audio and visual warning following an alarm. In this presentation, I will explain the three different options we have in our LiveGuard range in both analog and IP cameras. During this presentation, I will make three frequent references to three different height vision technologies. First of all, LiveGuard, which is the um, active deterrent. Secondly, AccuSense, which is our way of improving alarms. And thirdly, ColorView, which is our technology which brings our cameras color 24-7. I just wanted to make that clear before I started the presentation. So now I'm going to show you, or listen, you'll be able to listen to some alarms that will, uh, can be emitted from these devices. And please bear in mind that also there is a customized audio message that you can add to this list of alarms. So here we go. Warning, this is a restricted area. Warning, this is a no parking zone. Attention, please. The area is under surveillance. Seems like an age when you're waiting there saying nothing. Um, in the following slides, when I'm talking about IP cameras, you will see an orange box with Pro Series at the top of the screen. And conversely, when I'm talking about our analog cameras, there is a blue box with Turbo Series at the top. So in my mind, a uh, picture speaks a thousand words. So I'm going to go straight into this video which in essence shows what our LiveGuard Active Deterrent offers. When in alarm, it creates an extremely noisy and awkward environment that even the most hardened criminal would not want to hang around in. And combine this with the fact that my colleague Matt, in this example, does the best comedy escape that I've ever seen. Here I want to show the benefits of using LiveGuard in conjunction with IP cameras and Hype Connect. This being on top of the audible and visual warnings you will actually have on the site. Firstly, you'll receive live alarms on your phone via Hike Connect. Once the alarm has notified Hike Connect, you can have two-way conversation with the site, be it to offer assistance, to tell someone to go to reception, or to ward off unwanted visitors. And finally, the third option, if you're aware that there'll be motion on the relevant site, you have a one key, do not disturb, to silence this and any subsequent alarms for the rest of the day. One area where the turbo cameras differ from the IP cameras is that the turbo LiveGuard cameras have red and blue flashing lights, whereas the IP cameras flash white only. As well as the flashing lights, the turbo camera has three different audio warnings built into the camera and an additional customized audio message that you can manage via the Height Connect app. Matt will be showing this later on in his presentation. And when using LiveGuard with turbo, it is essential to use an AccuSense DVR. The reason for this I will come on to later. Here we show how to record the customized message. First of all, you go to settings within Hike Connect. You record the customized audio message. Then you select the NVR and the relevant camera. And then you send your customized message to that camera. A very, very simple process. Next, we're going to move on to the products that make up this solution. As I mentioned earlier, LiveGuard is our name for cameras that emit audible and visual warnings. The IP cameras all have AccuSense and some have color view as an enhancement. The color view cameras, the turbo cameras have color view and use the AccuSense alarm from the DVR. 
Both of these technologies improve the camera's ability to correctly identify a true alarm. So firstly, I want to discuss LiveGuard with AccuSense. Hopefully you're aware that AccuSense is a technology built into the camera that uses our deep learning technology to minimize the false positive alarms. We do this by using artificial intelligence within the camera or recorder that only creates an alarm when it sees a human and or a vehicle. This video shows clear motion caused by a dog and a ball. And these themselves, although they trigger a motion, they don't actually trigger the alarm because they haven't triggered the AccuSense. So as nighttime arrives, the system is ready to protect the property. So when an intruder breaks into the property, breaks the perimeter, enters the scene, the camera immediately recognizes yeah, this is an AccuSense alarm and sends the camera into its live guard response, hopefully sending the intruder away and again preventing the crime. AccuSense's technology will be leave will cut down about 80% of false positive alarms. These are the IP cameras that have AccuSense and LiveGuard. All the intelligence is in the camera, so we can use a normal NVR to record any activations. These cameras don't have color view, but they do have our powered by dark fighter technology, which I will show you later. And these come in turret and bullet forms. Likewise, here is the turbo solution that combined color view, AccuSense, and LiveGuard. And just to reiterate, we must use an AccuSense DVR, as this is where the differentiation between the false positives and the actual human vehicle, human vehicle alarms is made. And this must be part of our HUHI or HQHI versions of the AccuSense DVR. And the camera itself has the color view technology. This camera was previously, you may have known it as the Turbo HDX. We also have a range of LiveGuard IP cameras that have both ColorView and AccuSense. And just to recap on ColorView, it's our technology that maintains color 24 hours a day. It does this by utilizing three features. One, an advanced light sensitive sensor. Two, an extremely large aperture that lets more light onto the chip. And three, in cases of no light at all, there's a small supplementary LED white light to add light to the scene. So this camera really has the best of both worlds in that it maintains color images 24 seven and also differentiates between humans and vehicles and the false positives. Here we have some examples of our images from our cameras in our range that show the benefits of the color view cameras. These images were all captured by the lake in Stockley Park. So top left, you can see one of our pro series cameras that's dripped into black and white uh, and supplemented by IR. Now this is a perfectly good image. However, we can improve that just below that with our powered by dark fighter image that because it's a little bit more sensitive, adds a bit more light to the scene and maintains the color. However, the star of the show is bottom right, which is our color view camera. And with all those technologies built into the camera, we've got a near perfect daylight scenario. And all of those pictures were taken at the same time. And as a further example, we have a smartphone recording a scene that eventually moves to an NVR recording a color view camera. This is one of the best examples of the differences I have seen, so I just want to run through it again. Please note the differences between what the eyes can see now and what the color view technology can add here. I think it's absolutely staggering. Here are some more examples of why color view adds to the capabilities of LiveGuard. In the right hand image, because there is no IR glare, and the camera can distinguish the subject more clearly, leading to a more accurate alarm deterrent function. The top left image would have been best in class five years ago, but ColorView takes the image to the next level. And these are the IP cameras that have both AccuSense and ColorView to enhance the live guard operation, both available in bullet and turret. And again, here are the ColorView turbo cameras that work in conjunction with AccuSense DVRs to provide the live guard deterrent, again, in both turret and bullet formats. And just to show it's not only for external use, I'm sure this burglar would not want to hang around too long in this environment. So as the intruder breaks into the premises and he makes his way into the building, AccuSense picks up the alarm, and live guard prevents the crime. And in my last video, 
I want to show you that it's not just in sewer security applications where lifeguard can be a benefit, but also in many health and safety applications, where a person in the wrong place at the wrong time could do themselves or others harm. We can also create an alarm. Now onto the final section of my presentation to demonstrate where we can benefit from using our lifeguard active deterrent. Needless to say, I believe there are infinite applications where lifeguard could not only record the intention to commit a crime, but more importantly, potentially prevent it from happening in the first place. Be this in distribution, retail, construction, residential, hotels and leisures, or education. Again, infinite areas where we hopefully can prevent crimes. So, thank you for paying attention. Before we move on to the live demonstration, here's a quick reminder to put any questions you may have to the answers.uk at hypevision.com. Now I'm going to hand over to my colleague Matt Rose, who'll be doing a live demonstration. And I just must apologize for my small technical issue at the beginning with the audio. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, my name is Matt Rose, part of the pre-sale team here at Hike Vision. I'm going to go through the live demonstration with you today for LiveGuard. So let's detail the equipment that we've got here that we're going to be using for this demonstration. On the MVR side, we've got a DS7732 NIK4. And on the camera side, we have a DS2CD2347 G2 LSU forward slash SL. The key part there is the forward slash SL, which denotes the camera supports sound and light. We're going to go through programming one key disarm on the MVR. We're also then going to go through and show you all of those options that we have available to us on Height Connect as well. So let's get started then. Let's have a look at the MVR. So if we can pop the MVR up on the screen and we'll just go in and we'll start looking at some of the programming here. So we'll go into the programming menu if I can remember the pattern. There we go. So, disarm is programmed in on an alarm input. And we get to our alarm input by going to configuration, event, and normal event. Across the top here, this is the one we're looking for, alarm input. So we'll click on that. We've got all of our alarm inputs down on the left hand side. So this particular MVR supports 16 alarm inputs. We've also got two additional alarm inputs here because we've got two cameras connected to the system as well. So that's the first camera and this one is the second camera. We're not using that in this application. We're coming straight in on a local alarm input number one, which I've already pre-programmed. But if I go in on the edit function here, we'll go through all of the options that are available to us. So alarm input number refers to the alarm input that we'll be using. We're going to go in and use number one. Type refers to either normally open or normally closed. We've got a normally closed connection. Alarm name is just a text description. So I've put something in there to remind us exactly what it is. We are using it for one key disarming. So we've got that function enabled here. And all of these tick boxes across the bottom, this denotes which item we want to, to be emitted when we use the one key disarm. So I've got everything turned on here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the event that we've got and we'll be programming an intrusion event. So we look across the top, we've got our camera. We are going to be using this camera here. We've got our intrusion event, so we need to select that as opposed to line crossing. We've got the rule enabled, so it's turned on. And we've got our box drawn in the center of the scene here. Over on the right hand side, we've got arming area. So this camera now supports four regions. So we could have four different boxes, different size boxes in the scene. We're only using one in this application, but you guys may find the need to have more than one. Time threshold refers to the amount of time that the target needs to stay in the box before the alert is generated. And sensitivity refers to the percentage of that target that needs to be inside the box before the alert is generated. So we've got this one set for 50, so it's really straightforward. 50% of the target inside the box for it to be activated. Underneath here, we've got our AccuSense classification. We've only got human turned on here. And as I'm sure you can see from this scene, we wouldn't really be able to get a vehicle through there. So we've got that one turned off. 
The next one we've got over here is Armin Schedule. So currently this one's active 24 seven because everything is blue. We can change that very, very easily just by clicking on edit. We've got our different weekdays across here, our start and end time, and then we're also able to copy that through to relevant days as well. So for example, if I just wanted it for working days during the week, I would select one through to five and it would copy that all the way through and leave off the weekend. We've also got our linkage action. So we've got our alarm pop-up window, which when that alert is generated, it'll display a pop-up on the MVR. Buzzer alarm will create an audible warning at the MVR. This is the one we're interested in, which is Notify Surveillance Center, which will send those alerts through to Hike Connect for us. Send email will send an email of that alert through to a pre-programmed email address. We've got alarm output linkage, which we can activate an alarm output, not only on the MVR, but also on any connected camera as well. But we're not using that in this demonstration. Trigger channel is for recording. And PTZ linkage is where we could use that ruler to trigger straight through to a preset on a PTZ camera. We're not using that because we haven't got a PTZ on the system. So the last option we have here is audio and light, light alarm linkage. This is where we can turn on or off the alarm and the, the light and sound linkage that comes direct from that camera. So let's come back out of here and let's look onto the main screen. Let's go full screen, there we go. Right, let's see if we can get an activation come through. If I can get one of my colleagues to walk through the scene here and we'll see if we can get an activation. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to activate the one key disarm and we'll see if we can get Andy to walk through again and we should see no alerts come through at all. As easy as that. So what might you want to use one key disarm for? Well you could connect this to an intruder alarm for example so that whenever your customer sets or un unsets the system the camera system will be armed automatically. There's loads and loads of different reasons, that, or different ways that we could use this. Because it's just a switch that comes directly in onto the MVR. So let's have a look at some of the options that we can do on Height Connect. There's our Height Connect there. So we've got our MVR across the top, which is our 7732. So let's just go in and have a look at some of the functions that we get available from the camera. Right then, so down on the bottom here, this is for our supplementary light. So the camera can automatically adjust the, bring on the supplementary light depending on the external lux level. So with it set here, I can, when the lux level drops too low, because that supplementary light will currently be at about 50% power with it set there, or I could turn that down to about 33%, or up here to around about 70%, 70%. or I could turn it off altogether. Another option we got here is we can activate the alarm output. So if we do that, and we can also activate the sound, the, the light as well. This though, this is my best, this is the best feature of this camera, absolutely, because it's a two way speech and it's so easy to do as well. So you click on the camera, we've got a microphone down the bottom here. We click on the microphone, select the camera, and we're now two-way audio straight through. Andy, can you hear me? Hello, Matt. There we are, easy as that. Thanks, Andy. Let's come back out of there. Absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to do, let's have a look at what we can do on the turbo side, because we've got a turbo DVR connected as well. So if we can nip over to the turbo recorder, oh there it is. We go in onto the menu. Now we're going to be looking at the settings. So we'll go in on system. We're going to look at event and smart event. We're going to pick the camera that we're looking at. In this case, we're looking at turbo liveguard. We're programming intrusion detection, same as before. So we've got our box in on the scene here. This particular setup will only support one region as opposed to four on the previous. 
we've got our time threshold and sensitivity, which is exactly the same as before. So in this instance, this, the time threshold is set for zero, so it will activate instantly. And we've got our sensitivity set for 80, which means that 20% of the target would need to be inside the box before it activates. And we've also got our target detection set to human, and we've got vehicle turned off. Arm and schedule is the same as before. We've got everything active 24-7, but we could change this um, as we see fit, should we want to. Next across here, we've got our uh, linkage action, which is the same as before. Full screen monitoring, audible warning, notify surveillance center, which is the one we're going to be using. Send email and upload captured pictures to cloud. On trigger alarm output, we can turn on or off whether we want the light or the sound from the camera to activate, and also any local outputs that come direct from the DVR. Another great thing that we're able to do is we can click on the cog icon here to the right-hand side of trigger alarm output, and we can put that alarm output through a schedule in the same way that we, um, we, we did previously. So we've got our weekdays across the top here and then all of our times, and we're also able to copy that through to relevant days should we want to. Okay, so that's that, that's that. We're happy with our linkage action. So what we're gonna do now is we'll try and activate that now. So if I flick over onto the IP side, so you can see the camera. There we go. Right, we should be good to go now. So if we can get Andy to walk across the scene, we'll see if we can get some red and blue lights from that turbo camera. Right, let's just try that one again. Andy, do you want to walk in front of the scene for me, please? There we go. Absolutely fantastic. So we can mute those notifications through. So let me just hit the mute button when that's finished. And we'll send Andy through again. And if you want to walk through for me, please, buddy, we'll see uh, no activation at all come through now. There we go. So let's flip over to High Connect, and we can show you how we enable and disable that function. So here's our High Connect over here. We've got the IP side at the top. We've got our uh, DVR across the bottom, and we've got the bell icon here. As we can see at the moment, that's got a little cross through it. So if I tap on that, notifications are enabled. And if I tap on it again, that's notifications disabled. It really is as easy as that. So I've got them turned off at the moment, but another thing that, is, that we're able to do, and we can do this on the IP side as well as the turbo side, is we can put it through a notification schedule. So I've gone in on settings, I go down to notification, I've got a notification schedule, and I can program a notification schedule for the alerts to come through. Currently, this one's set for 24-7 operation, midnight through to 23.59, all day, every day. But I can adjust that by clicking on time schedule. I can set the start time and also the end time. And then I can ripple that through and turn on and off relevant dates that I want to. Another great thing that I'd like to show you is recording the custom audio. So if we come back out here, and this is so simple, it really is. We'll click on the settings. We'll go down to custom audio, which is down the bottom. Select the channel. So we're gonna use Turbo LiveGuard. We'll go into settings and we've got start recording now across the bottom. So as soon as I hit start recording, it's gonna enable us to record a message. So let's give it a go. Welcome to Hike Vision. And once we're finished, I can give that a name. I'm going to call that testing. There we go. And that's it. Saved. As easy as that. We've got quite a few saved on there, to be honest. If I come all the way back out there. Right then. That concludes the live demonstration. I hope you found it useful. I'd like to hand back over to Mike Ward, who's going to do the Mentimeter survey and also the prize draw. Thank you.